My name is Robert Mendez. I am with the Corner World Popcorn Company. We are a locally owned popcorn company. We specialize in popcorn being popular old fashioned in big old pots, small batches, with ingredients you can find in your own kitchen cabinets. And we came to this idea because we love popcorn and we realized that popcorn has been degraded over time. And you notice that it doesn't taste like popcorn anymore. It tastes like all the different things we're putting in it to preserve it. Like corn syrup, um, soy less and stuff like that. What we've done is we've gotten rid of all that stuff. We've come up with a product that we've been able to test in the market and that's a great feedback on. First, our story. We don't come from any type of food background. We've never owned a food business. Um, my mom was in the food business when, uh, when she was younger, but that's as far as it goes. It doesn't have anything to do with me. We came from real estate. And we took a huge beating in real estate in 2008. Uh, we were we had been in business for about ten years, and basically we were had our heels dug in for this huge recession. And right in the middle of it, my wife had a stroke, 2009, and it completely leveled up everything. Uh, we had deals that were that were pending. We had deals that were in the middle of the rehab. We had deals that were had tenants in there, and everything just went. Everything was over. And so what we had to do was we had to dig ourselves out of this gigantic hole. And so what we did the next year is we worked to pay off everybody that we had involved in our real estate business. And that ended up leaving us with absolutely nothing. We were completely broke. And so what we found ourselves in the situation was we needed to create income. And so we liked popcorn and we were sitting around our table one night and we thought, wow, we live in a town where Green chili is, the, is our number one product, right? And, um, but we don't have any green chili popcorn. So we made some one night, took it to a party, it was a huge hit. We found out, hey, we're on to something. So we started kind of you know, developing products. And we came into our, uh, our MVP, Minimum Viable Popcorn. We came up with about four products, and we took it out, and we created our alpha stage. Okay, so we came up with our four flavors. And, um, you know, to try to keep all a little techie here. Our alpha stage was, uh, this is our first iteration of our logo concept, our card. These were some events that we went to to try out the product. Because when we first came to Fat Pipe, you know, it was all about customer discovery. It was still about all about customer discovery. So we thought, we're going to take it to the customers however we can, and we're going to get the feedback. And we got some great feedback on this first stage. And we, we realized that the product that we had was good. And people liked what we were doing. And so we went ahead and moved to the next stage. And we thought, well, it's time to up our game. So we started getting into events. We started doing growers markets. And for all summer long, we were able to support our business with the revenue that we brought in from just these small events. So we were able to pay our rent, pay all our utilities. No, no salaries yet, but we were able to, the business was able to sustain itself on just this little bit of income. So what we realized is that using strategic alliances helped us because we didn't have to go, for example, we, we partnered with someone that had a brittle company. And we were able to rent a sliver of her booth so that we could put our popcorn out there. And we were able to expose a thousand people to our popcorn product. And so strategic alliances came very handy with our company and the way we've been able to grow it. So what do we know now? We know we have a product that's different than everybody else's right now in the market. We know that we have a process that we can pop a million dollars worth of popcorn in our shop per year. Uh, we also know that our machines can't handle that kind of production for more than about six months. So we are in the process of developing our kitchen so that we can handle the business that we're about to bring on because we believe that fundraising is our next move. Fundraising is a huge opportunity that we see uh, as almost a, a change in distribution. Because <clears throat> now I can take a wholesale product and give it to an army of salespeople, and I don't have to pay a 33% distribution fee. So we found out that there's an opportunity there. And so what we decided to do is move on to some other things like the fundraising. And we've decided the best way to do that is to go away from the old and create more of a new process of fundraising. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to completely automate the system so that we take part of fundraising out. And when I talk about fundraising, I'm talking about schools, um, athletic organizations. 
The worst part about fundraising is being the team mom, right? Having to deal with the kids, having to deal with getting the money back, and we're going to automate all that, and we're going to use our product, our popcorn, as our test for that. So, that's it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I said it in my six minutes. I'm not sure if I even stayed on track. But um, what we really wanted to do is get you guys an idea of, of kind of what we've been through, and that, you know, bootstrapping a company when you're on food stamps is tough. <laughs> All right. Um, but we did it, and we're still doing it today. 